Based on the scientific evidence and what I see in my own practice, I've come to believe many climbers are using tape incorrectly, or more accurately, we're using it in a way that doesn't actually help us. It may even be working against us. So in this video, I'd like to cover the story of how taping became so misunderstood, what the research actually says versus what I think about it, how to use tape properly, and an alternative to tape that might actually be better for some people. So in general, there are about five scenarios where we might tape our fingers. One, we have a pulley injury, so we want to support it with tape while it heals. Two, we're afraid of a pulley injury and we hope tape will prevent one. Three, we have nagging or unidentified finger pain and we hope tape will help in some way. Four, we have a lumbrical or collateral ligament injury and use buddy taping to help it heal. And five, we have splits or skin issues. We can ignore reason number five because that one is fine. Reason four is also totally valid, so we can check that one off too. Reasons one through three though, that's where things get a little tricky because some of the evidence is lacking or even against the use of taping, but most people don't seem to know that. So how did we get to this point? What's up HB fam? You may have noticed lately that we've been able to post more frequently and consistently, and that is in part thanks to today's sponsor, Let's Get Checked. Let's Get Checked makes health testing easy by letting you get tested without having to visit a healthcare provider. Simply choose your test, Jason picked one for testosterone, as you can see here, and it will be delivered to you in discreet packaging with next day delivery. Once your sample arrives in the lab, confidential results will be available from your secure online account within two to five days. These results are reviewed by a clinician and a member of the Let's Get Checked nursing team may call you to review your results. In some cases, the clinician will be able to provide prescriptions to the pharmacy of your choosing. Let's Get Checked laboratories are CLIA approved and CAP accredited, which are the highest ranking levels of accreditation. Let's Get Checked allows you to avoid office visits by providing you with access to home testing and professional medical consultations without ever having to leave your home. It's never been this simple to get tested. If you're interested in acquiring your own at-home test, click the link in the description and use the code HOOPERSBETA to get 25% off your order. Plus it gives the channel a little kickback. I would argue that the real boom in taping happened sort of by accident, and unfortunately sort of due to misinterpretation or misunderstanding of data and research. In 2007, Shuffle et al. published a study about the effects of finger taping. They found that on fingers with an A2 and or A3 pulley injuries, a specific method of taping called H-taping, Hooper taping, uh, caused a 16% reduction in bowstringing. <laughs> bowstringing is when the flexor tendon pulls away from the bone. They also found a 13% increase in crimp strength. Note that the other two types of taping they tested were less effective. So suddenly we have scientific evidence saying that taping could help with pulley injury rehab. The result? Taping gets talked about a lot. An internet search for age taping results in 1.5 million articles. Tape becomes the hallmark of climbers with finger pain, often regardless of what the actual cause is. Tape becomes the climber's first method of treatment. Some people are even recommending H-taping as a way to prevent pulley injuries. But wait, this is getting blown way out of proportion. I mean, this is just one study about one type of injury. I think it's time for a sanity check. There are three key pieces of evidence that tend to get left out of the taping discussion. First, in the Shuffle study, the researchers measured injured and healthy fingers. They ultimately concluded we could not observe any increase in strength or decrease in bowstringing in the healthy fingers after having applied the tape, which underlines the observations of other researchers that taping can never approximate or improve upon the effectiveness of an intact pulley system. So they're saying that in healthy fingers, taping will not increase the strength of our pulleys. But there's more. Seven years before all this, a completely different study found that the amount of force tape could absorb on a finger was extremely limited. Consequently, the more force the researchers applied to the A2 pulley, the less helpful the tape became. They also noted that pain at the pulleys can stem from microtrauma or chronic overstrain, which is not necessarily alleviated by reducing bowstringing with tape. Overall, these observations led them to conclude that from a biomechanical point of view, pulley taping is probably minimally effective in relieving load from the A2 pulley when used to treat pain in this region. It is even more unlikely that protective pulley taping will prevent traumatic rupture of pulleys. So even though the design of the study was completely different from the Schoffel study, they came to a similar conclusion that tape won't prevent pulley injuries. In fact, they think it's unlikely to reduce much load on the pulley at all. But there's one more study we're leaving out. 
In 2022, Salas et al. published a study on the effects of taping on 112 cadaver fingers. In the end, they concluded, rock climbers and physicians should be aware of the biomechanical evidence showing that H-taping may not prevent rupture of an intact pulley when used as prophylaxis, and it does not increase fingertip force in the crimp grip position or prevent propagation of the tear in treatment of partially torn pulleys. So, in reality, for partial pulley tears and milder strains, the research says that taping does not absorb enough force to be helpful. If you try and wrap the tape tighter to combat this, you'll quickly lose mobility and blood flow. And if your pulleys are currently intact, current evidence says taping will do nothing to help prevent an injury and will not allow you to crimp harder. So, is there any point to taping then? In my opinion, tape has some specific pros and cons. Let's talk about bowstringing first. We know that when placed correctly, tape will help reduce bowstringing in fingers with pulley injuries. Reducing bowstringing lessens the angle of the tendon at the pulleys, so in theory, this should reduce irritation during day-to-day -day activities and rehab exercises. In the studies we looked at, the researchers tend to conclude that this is only applicable to severe pulley injuries like a full rupture. This is where I disagree with them. I don't think they provide enough data to make that conclusion with confidence. In my opinion, there's still a possibility that reducing bowstringing with tape could be helpful for partial tears as well. However, for milder pulley injuries, tape does not appear to do anything helpful biomechanically speaking. And if you've had past injuries that are now healed, tape will not protect you. In fact, it might work against you. The psychological aspect of taping should not be overlooked, as this can have a powerful influence on us. It may have even been the cause of the 13% increase in crimp strength in the shuffle study, which the participants noted they felt exceptionally well protected. Is it a good thing or a bad thing to be able to try harder because you feel protected? In my experience, it's a good thing to reduce excessive fear surrounding an injury. Fear causes stress and sometimes hypersensitivity. Beyond that, however, I think tape quickly becomes a crutch for climbers. Being able to try harder because of tape won't help you heal faster. Plus, climbers often become afraid to climb without tape. Many climbers don't actually rehab or retrain their injuries fully because they become so reliant on the safe feeling of tape. If this sounds like you, I recommend you break this habit and get real about rehab. You don't want to become that climber who's had to tape up their fingers every session for the last three years. Now, if you are going to use tape, there are a couple of evidence-based methods that I would recommend. Use age taping. Based on the research, this appears to be the most effective form of taping as it provides mechanical support in the right regions of the A2 and A4 pulleys. If you hate age taping, put your tape at the distal end of your proximal phalanx or the proximal end of the middle phalanx, depending on your injury. For lumbrical or collateral ligament injuries, use buddy taping to help prevent the tissue from getting aggravated during day-to-day -day activities and climbing. For other types of injuries, I recommend this custom technique that I've come up with. Take the tape off and do your rehab activities. Bear in mind that tape stretches. If you're exercising with tape on, it will not maintain its holding force forever, which is risky if you're pulling harder than you normally would because you think the tape is supporting you. The shuffle study actually recommends that you replace the tape after every route, but that sounds incredibly impractical. For severe pulley injuries, I recommend using a splint instead. Splints provide rigid support with no stretching while also allowing full blood flow. For the best fit, you can get a custom-made splint from a hand therapist, but you can also make your own by following this great tutorial by Dr. Jared Vagey, though we'd appreciate it if you subscribed before you leave. Until next time, train, climb, send, and repeat.